All right, today is the final conclusion, probably, of a story that began almost four years ago, in fact, in February of 2021. And I gotta say, it's a pretty satisfying conclusion when I consider the full scope of what actually happened and who it happened to. It's kind of a weird feeling to sit here and think, what if I'm past my prime, on YouTube at least, which certainly has crossed my mind at least a few times recently, but like, damn, dude. I have a playlist linked down below, and trust me, the microphone quality might be relatively bad, but that right there is a content odyssey. And before watching this one, it certainly doesn't hurt to go back and see the full context of why and how this bungee executive landed himself and his actress slash singer slash Twitch streamer wife in extremely hot water, when the mechanism by which they managed to do so exemplifies every single thing that they criticized for literal years. For anyone who doesn't feel like doing that, not a problem at all. Here's an overview of everything that went down as quickly as possible. Once upon a time, there was a rising Destiny 2 streamer named Lono. His social media name was, at the time, Say No To Rage. About six or seven years ago, timeline honestly really isn't that important for this, but closer to a decade than not at the very least, Lono, Say No To Rage, who has since rebranded himself to Reforge Gaming or Reforge Media, had some, let's put it this way, inappropriate interactions with fellow streamers at in-person streaming events. Now, when I say inappropriate, I mean inappropriate because he was married and has a family, and I'm certainly no fan of his. But I want to be extremely precise right now because the result of these inappropriate interactions was the total annihilation of his streaming career across multiple different platforms with coordinated effort. The prior video I did on the subject goes into much, much more detail with quotes and other analysis, but here's the basic summary. One woman claimed that he got creepy after she gave him her vape pen, he got way too high I guess, and crossed several lines by touching her hair unwantedly, leaning on her shoulder during a bus ride, rubbing his own legs and making suggestive comments I guess in the process, as well as staring and smiling at her in a way that she was, she felt was creepy. Prior to that, according to her statement, he hugged her in an overly familiar way at a house party, and they eventually had nothing to do with each other anymore after she called out his behavior and he apologized for it. Another woman showcased a bunch of their private messages, said he was making sexual jokes that made her uncomfortable. She called him out, he apologized, and it was done, years ago. Another person said they were talking at a loud bar, he asked if she wanted to go to his hotel room, and she had a nervous breakdown. Yet another woman said that he had put his hand on her thigh at a bar, she denied him, and he later messaged her his hotel address. Another woman said he had put his hand on her thigh again at a card game, no further details. And lastly, a woman named Sarah Daniels posted a massive thread about how, how he cornered her, made her feel uncomfortable, but most importantly, how much it sucks that he's top of the directory on Twitch, how it sucks that he has sponsors, and it sucks to watch him get verified on Twitter. Essentially, a lot of accusations that he's a creep from various people, and one particular hyperemphasis on the fact that he's successful, so something, quote, had to be done about it, end quote. Well, once again, the prior videos have all sorts of clips and quotes about this. It turns out that there was some sort of group discussion happening behind the scenes between a bunch of the people who posted accusations, or especially amplified those accusations on social media, coordinating those posts to within mere minutes of each other in some cases. And while there's technically nothing wrong with that, for me it began shifting the picture. Just to be completely upfront right now, I never even liked this guy. Being creepy and having social repercussions for that is a pretty natural component of the streaming world, but the thing that really impacted my opinion was when his in-game Destiny account got developer banned. It's one thing to be denied access to a convention because people complained about you, or you get dragged on social media because you made someone feel uncomfortable and they decided to make it a public spectacle. This is the internet after all. But when a coordinated group of people are making sure that all of their accusations are synchronized, and then your video game accounts are getting suspended at the same time, that's a pretty big deal. Well, it turns out that his Destiny account wasn't banned for violating terms of service or anything like that. It apparently got developer banned, which seems to be a targeted action taken by someone at the company. And for me, others might disagree, but I stand pretty firm on this. For me, that's probably the singular most important line that got crossed. To be fair, Bungie doesn't give a whole lot of clarity on why accounts get suspended, so if there's some legitimate or valid reason why his account deserved to be terminated, like hacking or something, then that's a different story entirely. But when I look at the full picture, I see a very obvious pattern, and no indications of him ever breaking TOS. So make of that what you will. All of this and a little bit more, but I'll spare everybody the time, led to me deciding that I wanted to talk about things, and that's where the dynamic shifted, decidedly, from evaluating a hefty dose of cancel culture to a Disney princess and her bungee executive lawyers 
coming after my personal channel. See, Sarah Daniels, one of the most outspoken people against Say No to Rage, is actually married to a guy named Christopher Barrett. Remember the wedding photo, it's important later on. And Chris Barrett was a high-level Bungie executive at the time, working on Destiny. Not only that, but when all of this was happening, Sarah Daniels got pretty vocal about the fact that she had the, quote, Bungie corporate attorneys giving them direct advice. No lawyer would take his case. I mean, like, when we sent everything to our attorneys, they were like, don't worry about it. <laughs> They're like, you don't have to worry about it. Nothing's going to That was literally, like, they did not care. Like, the Bungie corporate attorneys were like, you're fine. Just go on with your life. I know some people are thinking, why does this matter? But it matters because after I decided to speak out against what I perceive to be a coordinated campaign aimed at completely ruining someone's livelihood, crossing all sorts of boundaries in the process, like even apparently suspending his video game accounts, Sarah Daniels, former Disney princess, actress, singer, streamer, etc., her husband, Chris Barrett, Bungie executive, and her supposed corporate Bungie lawyers decided to come after me. First, a lawyer named Michael Schneider from a boutique law firm called Bitwise Legal, who I guess previously worked for Bungie at some point in time, tried to copyright strike the video because of live stream clips and the wedding photo. But YouTube denied the claim. This is especially funny because YouTube enjoys what's called safe harbor protections by adhering to every single valid DMCA complaint that ever gets filed. They don't arbitrate, they just strike whatever it is as soon as they get a valid notice. Pretty sure that's how they maintain Section 230 protections entirely. But this complaint was so bad, YouTube straight up denied them. Of course, they tried again, and YouTube once again said no. But it gets even better because once the copyright claims had failed, she sent her mother after me, who also tried to claim the wedding photo. Pretty sure one of them committed perjury here, by the way, because the mother claimed legal ownership of the photo as the photographer of the wedding, and the lawyer claimed legal ownership of the photo on behalf of his client, Sarah Daniels, each of them for the express and failed purpose of falsely striking down a video, meaning one of them was claiming ownership of something that wasn't theirs to get the content illegally removed, which I'm pretty sure is the exact definition of perjury. However, none of it really matters because ultimately they all came up short. Now for the best part. After all of this went down, over three years after actually, an article hits Bloomberg titled, quote, top director at Bungie was fired after misconduct investigation, end quote. Yeah, Chris Barrett, the developer husband of Sarah Daniels, got fired after an internal investigation showed, quote, Barrett called lower level female employees attractive, asked them to play truth or dare, and made references to his wealth and power within the studio, suggesting that he could help advance their careers, according to two people familiar with the case, end quote. Further down, quote again, Barrett would befriend women at the studio in various departments and then send them a barrage of text messages that blurred the lines between professional and personal. In interviews, multiple women who reported Barrett said the advances were unwanted and that they felt uncomfortable because Barrett was significantly more powerful than they were at the company. Texts reviewed by Bloomberg News included flirtatious messages from Barrett and requests to hang out with the women involved, end quote. Important disclaimer, and it's actually super important to make this clear. Two wrongs obviously don't make a right. One person doing things that are perceived as creepy isn't somehow exonerated simply because the husband of his most vocal accuser was doing the exact same things, or worse things, actually. However, if we look at everything in context, it's a bit of a strange picture. As the article came out, Sarah Daniels deleted her entire Twitter page, but she also started saying a lot of things on Twitch during her next broadcast, including this. I was still married when Chris and I started dating, fun fact. So was Chris. Chris and I were both married when we started dating. Like, if you've ever thought that Chris and I were fucking squeaky clean people, I'm really sorry, because we have never been squeaky clean people. I think that's been very fucking obvious, but yeah, we're like two fucking shady pieces of shit. <laughs> hey, but we ended up marrying the right person. Once again, two wrongs don't make a right, but when a video game streamer has been supposedly, what, inappropriate with six different women, and his most vocal critic has gotten together with a bunch of high profile broadcasters, like big names in the industry, by the way, we're amplifying all of this, and suddenly his gaming accounts are getting suspended as well, while she's married to an executive at the company behind that game, and they have their corporate bungee lawyers, with big air quotes around that, attacking yet failing because they're a joke, when it comes to someone like me who wants to just critically evaluate their narrative, that's a little bit absurd. 
especially when the Bungie executive husband is doing things that are arguably worse to more than six women at Bungie and getting himself fired for it while he and his wife are only together because they broke up two separate marriages. Sarah's absolutely right. They're not squeaky clean people. They're hypocrites, and in my opinion, they're liars, who made every effort to not only destroy someone's livelihood because they personally didn't like him, but also tear down anyone brave enough to speak up about it. As the husband goes around doing everything they're supposedly crusading against and more at the company, which was questionably suspending the in-game account belonging to the target of this executive's wife's cancellation effort. Somewhere in all of that, I think everyone out there should be able to agree, something is really fishy. Bottom line, after years of time have passed, we finally get some sort of resolution here, because the dynamic duo of Disney princess and Bungie executive turned out to be the dynamic duo of cheating on people and harassing women, go figure. While they spearheaded an effort to ruin the life of another streamer, with intensity I might add, which is now reflected right back at them. Stones, throwing, glass house, I think everybody knows the metaphor. That's it. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. Special VPN deal, of course, locals and Patreon, etc, etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching. Question everything. And have a nice night. Thank you.